Hi, this is George, and today I'm going to talk to you about managing entities inside of I-21, what the concept of entities is, right? So the idea is that you might have a vendor, and that vendor might also be a customer, and that vendor also might provide transportation services to you. A vendor might do a lot of things. A customer might do a lot of things. Do you want to save all their information about them, their locations, their contacts, stuff that's common in their relationship, whether they're a customer or a vendor, in one place? Or do you want to recreate it over and over in the system? We believe that you should create it in one place. So I'm going to look at our vendor file and I'm going to pick an example vendor. Let's look at this 1099 example vendor. One thing to note is there's a bunch of information like name, address, city, state, zip, locations, and contacts that don't change based upon this person being a vendor or a customer. All this information, our physical locations, names, addresses, and such stay the same. So what we've done inside of I-21 is created entities which allow you to access tabs that fully contain the information about that specific entity type that you're dealing with. But it keeps the entity information at a higher level so it's not reproduced. So let's say this 1099 example vendor was also a customer, which they are, you can actually keep information um, common for their address, their context, their location, so you don't have to retype it any time that you get into the system. So that's pretty cool from that respect. Um, you can also keep information about the line of business, what type of business this person is in, so that you can deal with it and manage it. But again, you can see here that I can track the entity, the contacts, and the locations all on my own from that perspective. Now, another piece that I can do here is if you want to look at a different entity, I'm going to go into the vendors and I'm going to go and look up Joe Ag, who is one of our sample vendors, and he's also a customer. And I can look at him and I can say, oh, I wonder what this individual is doing from a portal perspective. Should we give them access? Well, let's take a look at Joe and let's see. Oh, he already has access. Hmm, interesting. Where is he looking inside of our system? What does he have access to? Well, he has access to vouchers, which are payments that have been made to him, invoices. He can make a payment. He can see his payment history. He can see contracts. Interesting. This is very interesting. So this individual can access our I-21 system, and he can actually see these functions. And so can other people if we extend this throughout his org simply by creating new contacts and assigning them a security role. So a very simple method of, of assigning contacts from a portal perspective as well. That's what our entity controls. So when you look at entity type, this person is a vendor and a customer. Pretty cool. All right, so now let's take this a little further and let's go into sales AR and let's look at customers, right? And then let's look at Joe Ag here again. It's auto filtered because it's the same uh, record. So when I filter that AP, it comes over to AR. Pretty cool. That's the entity search. Now I'll bring up that entity and now you'll note I have all his customer information, which is really cool. So again, this allows for segregation. If you had rights, you could see both. If you don't, or if you have it segregated, you can only see the relative customer information rather than the vendor information, which reduces confusion. Now again, this concept is stretched even further, giving you access to all information about the customer, like what approvals are required for this customer from a credit perspective, what pricing is in place for this customer? Are there taxes or levies on this customer? What respect of setup for grain bank and how are they set up for grain? Any integrations for licensing or patronage, anything like that. All that in one spot. And all the contacts, as you'll note, are shared with the A p which is pretty cool so now this person can have multiple roles inside the company and you don't have to deal with multiple um, sets of data the other thing that you'll note here is you can make him not only a vendor and a customer but they can also be an employee a salesperson a broker pretty much any concept we have in our system as far as people you can make that person. So that's the first thing I wanted to show you, how those entities roll up. Now, why is that important? It's pretty cool because now in searches, if I'm looking for Joe Ag's invoices um, and I just go in and say Joe, I can find Joe Ag, um, or it's not equals, it's contains. I can find all Joe Ag's invoices very quickly, right? And now this says Joe Ag and Joe Petro. Again, here to limit the search, I'm going to bring back Joe Ag and delete 
and only see Joe Ag. Now, you can see I've done that at the customer side, and I've quickly brought up his invoices. I don't have to worry that I reference him differently in payables and, and um, receivables. So it's a very easy way to tie up customers, right? So that's how I can quickly see all the information about him. The other cool thing is on that entity, right, um, or any of the entity's bills, I have the ability to make comments and talk about specific invoices. So here I can go to activities and I can send an email on to either Joe Ag or to other people in the org about this vendor and it'll link to this vendor and send an email with information about the vendor. I can also email that vendor invoices and information very quickly. So it basically gives me quick access to that vendor data. Um, and, and allows me to actually see it very quickly. Now, if I go into this customer, the other piece that I can do is I can pull up this customer and I can look at very quickly um, from the respect of activities, I can look at any activities that have happened on this customer and I can create activities on the customer as well as on the actual um, uh, invoice or transactional level. So very flexible system. And again, all these activities are compiled inside of our CRM. So in CRM, you can get a view of all the activities that are set from that respect. The other piece that we have inside the entity is a messaging center, which gives you the ability to create alerts for all different types of business conditions, right? So, I mean, like, a, you know, you, you want to tell them that's this pop up on a scale ticket entry. You want to pop, message when you create a print ticket, when you create an invoice for this customer, tell them happy birthday. All this information can be listed very quickly when with the pop-up screen. So, so pretty cool from that respect. The other piece that I'm going to talk about from the entity is that they can log into the system and see data too. So I'm going to create a new session and I'm just going to log in to, um, to our solution as Joe Ag. So you note know, that is our customer. So I'm going to go in to our solution. As Joe Ag. Now I, when I see the menu as Joe Ag, I have a really stripped down method that allows me to do some very simple things like uh, see my invoices or see my vouchers, right? And these are payments made to me. So I can see all the tickets that I have outstanding and the status of that ticket and if that ticket was paid and all that information I can get to very quickly. If I want to see when it was paid, I can see the check number that it was paid on and the amount that was paid and any other bills, tickets it was paid with. So from a, uh, an actual vendor or customer perspective, being able to log into the system and see data about our solution it's just very simple, right? They can see anything they want. They can see what they have in storage. They can see scale tickets. They can see anything. They could make payments if you gave them access, any of that data. So the entity concept is very powerful concept, which allows us to do a lot of things across the whole enterprise.